Over the years, Aurelic network players got more upmarket and thus more costly. With the Aries S1 and the Vega S1, Aurelic introduced a new range of more affordable streamers. In this video, I take a look at the Aries S1 and the optional power supply upgrade. As always with Aurelic, the Aries has a digital outputs while the Vega has an internal DAC and thus analog outputs. For both S1 versions there is a power supply upgrade that offers further increased sound quality. Aurelic now has three price levels, S1, G1.1 and G2.2, for both the Aries and the Vegas. Later this year the G3 top line will be introduced which globally will be the G2.2 plus integrated Proteus X1 scaler. That will be around 11 grand. But now we look at the 2000 euros Aries S1, first standalone and later with the optional 1000 euro power supply. But let's first see where it finds its place in your stereo. Being a network player, it needs to be connected to your network over a network cable. This way it can play music from streaming services, internet radio and when you have a computer or NAS with music stored on it, it can play that too. There is no Wi-Fi. On the other end, the Aries S1 has to be connected to a digital to analog converter, DAC for short, over AES-EBU, SPDIF, TOSLINK or USB. That DAC is then connected to an amplifier connected to loudspeakers or headphones. If your amplifier or AV receiver has a DAC built in, that can be used instead of the separate DAC and amp. An iPad or iPhone is used to select the music. Those that use an Apple computer with Apple Silicon can run the iPad app on that too. An app for Android, Windows or Linux is not available. You could use the Aries S1 as input selector by connecting for instance the digital output of your CD player or other digital sources to it. You could even change volume digitally if you like. The sturdy black metal housing measures 210 by 291 by 87 mm and weighs 2.23 kilos. The entire front is covered by a transparent polycarbonate with behind it a 4 inch full color display that is used for the menu and showing what music is played. On top, near the front are 5 buttons. From left to right for standby, play pause and select when using the menu, menu activation and the skip track buttons that double as up and down buttons for use in menus. On the back we find an IC mains inlet with power switch. Next to it an HDMI connector that is only used to connect the optional power supply to. It is not a normally used HDMI connector and does not do audio nor video. A USB A connector lets you hook up a USB drive while the network is connected just above it. Then the digital inputs, USB B for connection to a computer. SPDIF, TOSLINK 1 and TOSLINK 2. Finally the digital outputs, AES-EBU, TOSLINK, SPDIF and USB-A. When the Aries S1 is opened, the bottom plate and back plate holds the electronics. The linear power supply is situated at the front. From the IC mains inlet, the mains is sent to a mains filter and from there to the ring core transformer. After which the low voltage AC is rectified and stabilized. In a separately shielded area we find the output board with below it out of sight the input circuit and the Tesla G3 engine. The latter can be found in all new Aurelic G2.2 products too and has far more computational power than the predecessor. It does resampling, parametric equalizing, speaker placement compensation, loudness leveling and will direct live room correction as soon as it is certified. 
It also reduces jitter and other imperfections in the digital signal. As I have told many times before, a digital signal is in fact an analog square wave signal that can be distorted and polluted to some degree, which is no problem as long as the signal remains in the digital domain. But as it arrives at the digital to analog conversion circuit, even the slightest imperfection or pollution can lead to several forms of jitter on the clock input of the circuit. Quality upsampling can further improve the sound quality of the DAC since it will make work for the reconstruction filters a lot easier. The task of the Aries S1 is to deliver a very clean upsampled signal to the DAC. Connecting the DAC to your system is easy as we have seen in the where to use chapter. The next step is to download the Lightning DS app. As said, it's only available for iOS. Then simply start it up and follow the instructions. After the setup the screen might look something like this, with left the menu and right the info of that menu item. On inputs you see all the sources the Aries S1 offers. TOS2 for instance is the second TOSLink input and USB is the USB input coming from a computer. Collection leads to your favourite albums. Scrolling goes lightning fast, pun intended, since it uses an index file in the Aries S1 itself. Then the playlist, with checkout being albums I want to evaluate. The music notes bring you to your music library which you can browse on albums, artists, genre and so on. Internet radio shows a menu so let's go for browse by genre. Select classic rock and select the United States. That's quite a collection. Then the cock wheel at the bottom that brings you to settings. Here you can set the language. The choices are English, French, German, simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. In music library you can pick the DNA storage on your computer or NAS. The Aries S1 will import the DNA metadata and index it again in its local database, hence the speed. Let's go to the Aries S1 settings. Here you can change the name of your player. Additional operations brings you to an HTML menu with all the settings that can also be done using the display and keys on the player. The right column offers help per item, like here with library setup. Streamer setup lets you enable volume control, loudness levelling, activate airplay, rune ready, spotify connect and tidal connect and other streaming settings. Processor setup brings you to all the DSP functions like resampling, convert DSD to PCM, DSD processing and the parametric equalizers. Here you set frequency, gain and Q factor. Let's change the gain of band 1 with 6 dBs. And now change the Q factor from 1 to 2. It's a bit laborious, but it works. Furthermore, it's possible to compensate for speaker placement differences in distance and level. And as soon as certified, Direct Live can be activated here. Finally, hardware setup lets you select the input, called DAC input channel, despite there is no DAC in the Aries. That should have been just input channel of course. Like the naming of the streamer output settings. This has to do with the use of the Tesla 3 engine in all products of course. I'm sure a future update will correct that and it is of no consequence for the functionality of course. Then there are display settings, network information and hardware information. Apart from using the app you can also learn the Aries S1 infrared codes from an existing remote control, like the one that came with your amp and has separate keys for a CD player. The Aries S1 was connected to the Holo Audio CN2 DAC over a short network acoustics Eno BNC cable with 75 ohms BNC to RCA adapters. The amp was the Air Acoustics AX520 that was connected to the DAC over Grim Audio SQM cable. 
The air was connected to a pair of PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio OVA70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The connection to the Zissel GS1900-10HP switch was over the Network Acoustics Eno system network filter. The Rune Nucleus 1 server was also connected to the Zissel switch over a CAT6 patch cable. Further on in the network a Synology DS119J NAST running minim server provided music for the Lightning DS app. See my video about my reference setups March 2024 for more info on the network setup. Like all Aurelic Aries the sound was neutral and coloured. Not warm nor sharp or bright. There is a royal stereo image. Rather clean sibilance and good microdynamics while voices have a slightly accentuated contour. It's all on the good side of pleasant and detailed listening. But the critical listener might want even more. I'll scale it about halfway between the Magna Mano Ultra MK3 Farad and the Aurelic Aries 1. The influence of a power supply on the sound can't be underestimated. That goes for analog as well as digital equipment. In my video The BS About Network Switches and the like, the importance of a stable, fast and noise free power supply has been discussed. You might want to watch this if you haven't already, so I put links at the usual places. Good power supplies are rather costly, not only due to the cost of copper as used in transformers, but also because Components like voltage regulators vary largely in quality, even within the same model number. This means that quality selection is needed, which increases the price per component. This must be the reason Aurelic, like other manufacturers, included a good power supply in the S1 series with the option of an upgrade with an even better power supply. The PSU S1 has the same dimensions and looks as the Aries S1, with the exception of the front, that is simply in the same colour black as the rest of the housing. On the front there are only the logo and a small LED to indicate the power status. On the back we see the IC mains inlet plus power button and power supply output on HDMI. Placed next to each other they are about the same width as a full size stereo component, 42 cm. Inside we find a double linear power supply. The mains inlet is followed up by a mains filter before sent to the two bespoke ring core transformers. These are followed up by four voltage regulators and a large bank of electrolytic capacitors. When compared to the linear power supply in the Aries S1 the difference is clear. Although a lot more components not automatically lead to a better sound of course. So time to connect the supplied HDMI cable between the Aries S1 and the PSU S1. This cleans up the already good sound quality a step further. Forces get even cleaner, microdynamics gain on impact, the stereo image improves on stability. Perhaps the best way to describe it is that the sound moves further in the direction of analog. It clearly shows the influence of a power supply on a digital output of a network player. It brings the S1 very close to the Aries 1. Perhaps even above it, I can't say for sure without direct comparison. This is a fine addition to the product portfolio of Aurelic. Over the years the price of the base model Aries moved from 1000 euros 10 years ago to 3000 euros today. The first Aries had a plastic housing, an external power supply that could be upgraded and an engine that had about just enough speed. The new Aries S1 has a metal housing, internal power supply, the very powerful Tesla S3 engine and a full color display. Compared to the Aries G1.1 at 1900 euros the price is 1000 euros lower while having a faster Tesla G3 engine that will do direct live in the near future. 
and with the option of later adding the power supply upgrade. Using the Lightning DS app and the Aurelic streaming engine, you have a very fast user interface while you optionally have the choice of using a UPnP DLLA app, Rune or Airplay, Tidal, Cobus, Amazon Music, KKBox and NetEase Music are supported too. Just as Spotify and Tidal Connect, the sound quality might be the best in its class, both for the standard Aries S1 and for the combination with the external PSU. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. Next week, Friday at 5 pm Central European time, there will be a new video again. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram. You will be informed that new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.